Thank you. Uh, you may feel a bit dizzy splicing together two parts of the Bible, two different passages saying slightly two different things, and yet actually merging them together. So you may just feel, uh, didn't see that coming. Uh, that's unusual. That's a terrible way to treat the Holy Scriptures and all that sort of stuff. But just think about it. They're both talking about the body. They're both talking about the body, the body of Christ, but in two different ways. One is a body coming together and resurrection life going into it. The other one is a body self-mutilating, tearing itself apart. Because that's what we had going on in Corinthians. In Ezekiel, we saw a body coming together, a community that was dispersed, hopeless, being rejoined together, reconnected, being given new breath, new life, new resurrection. And what Paul was seeing in Corinthians was a body pulling itself apart. In one, God has brought dry bones together and back to life. In the other, we see sinful human nature doing what God, destroying what God has done in recreation and in self-mutilating the body of Christ. This is what ha can happen and was happening in Corinthians. There you had a group, a body, a church, and they were ripping themselves apart. And Paul stood up, and Paul wrote in his letter, and he said, you're not just pulling yourself apart, you're mutilating the body of Christ. These are really strong words that Paul is both, is, is saying. Both are seeking out what we would call today a positive body image. One shows a, pod a positive body image of a body coming together. The other one shows of what happens within body shaming. Because that what was happening amongst these people. Ezekiel and Paul, they were writers of these two passages. They were seers, they were visionaries. It's what makes them both great by way of people of faith. Visionaries see beneath the surface. They see things as they really are. And here we see Ezekiel and Paul seeing things in these two centuries apart, but both talking one looking forward to the body of Christ, one living in the experience of the now of the body of Christ. Both were pastors to people who were alone, who were homeless, and who were finding their way in their faith. For Ezekiel, the people were dismembered. They were dried up. They were cut off. They were in exile. Hope was missing. God spoke through Ezekiel and hope was born. For Paul, the church, the church in Corinth had come from a secular, multi-faith tradition. Who were those people who were then transported, translated, transplanted into the body of Christ, and they were trying to live and understand how now they should operate, how now they should live. Both Paul and Ezekiel linked the reality of what they saw in the vision to the everyday, to what people was happening in people's lives. For Ezekiel, that meant painting a picture of God's reality as God saw it, of those valley, of those dry bones coming together because they were feeling sorry for themselves. He told them what he saw, and then he began to see it and participate in it. And as he did that, he began, as we heard, to prophesy. They began to respond to what God was saying instead of listening to the gossip of their neighbors. They began to walk by faith and not by sight. But contrast that to what was happening in Corinth, to what Paul observed and experienced in that church. He saw people bringing with them their own worldviews, their own aspirations, their own morals, their own motivations from their previous life, 
which they'd learnt from their culture, and it was, they were bringing it into the church, and as a result, it was tearing the church apart. You know, Corinth was the one church that Paul put, caused Paul more headaches, more loss of hair, and probably more gray hairs than any of the other churches. He made three visits. The third one didn't go too good. He wrote four letters, two of which we have, two have been lost. And, but all of the letters deal with the problems in the church. Problems in the church community. Problems about relationships. And their problems were deep and their problems were numerous. There was division. There was sexual immorality. There was suspicion about why people uh, were, were doing certain things, what their motivations were and what motivated them within the church. The church experienced social, sexual and spiritual problems putting member against member and even members against Paul. These problems at this church ran deep. Yet, within this, and within this passage, we see Paul's heart. He saw himself as a kind of father to these young Christians, constantly affirmed them of his love for them, and that reveals Paul as the pastor. You know, Corinth may be alien and very distant historically to us. Culturally, it may be we don't understand it. The ancient world for us, the language, social relationships, economics, religion, all are very, very different from our own. Corinth was an important port city. It divided the northern part of the Roman Empire from the southern part of the no Roman Empire. It was a gateway to these two areas. It was founded by, uh, by the Roman army, and then they allowed, once you were in, conscripted into the Roman army, you belonged to the Roman army. You could then buy your way out by, so, by doing and participating in so many battles. Once you participate in so many battles, you were not only free of the army, but you were also given a place to live, status within a community, and this was one of the cities that they, they set up, was Corinth. Another one was Philippi. But here in Corinth, it was a bunch of ex-military men. And they had come in, it was a captive city. They'd ransacked it, they'd taken it over from the Greeks. They'd subjugated the Greeks to a point where they couldn't even speak Greek anymore. It was illegal. The language was Roman, was Latin. They weren't allowed their own language. They weren't even allowed a Greek name. It had to be a Latin name. The only time, according to archaeologists, you see Greek was in graffiti as a form of protests. This is the city where the church in Corinth is. They had in this church Greek and Jew. So when Paul says there is now neither Greek nor Jew, he's actually talking right at their community. You are equal. They was one. This city is described as prosperous, cosmopolitan, religiously pluralistic, accustomed to visits of impressive traveling public speakers, obsessed with status, self-promotion, self and personal rights. That's Corinth. You went to Corinth to make a name for yourself, to be a social influencer. And so, as part of the culture of the city, the church was following in the same way. And that led to divisions. In his letters, Paul deals with the Roman legal procedures. He deals with prostitution practices, baptism, baptism of the dead, ancient views of marriage, and so on. He's dealing with the impact of people coming into the church and 
having to learn all over again how to live as part of the body of Christ, a part of resurrection. How to live again. And that is the link between us today and them thousands of years ago. And our link all the way further back to Ezekiel. Here, people were asking the same question. How do we live as believers in today's world? That is the question that we must be answering. And you know, here we are, still a relatively new community, made up of people generally transplanted from other churches, from other faith communities around the town. Each of us have brought a history. Each of us bring baggage, intentionally and unintentionally. We bring with us, what we bring with us needs to be examined. And what we're trying to do here as we build a new community, an expression of the body of Christ, is to not ignore our past, but to examine it and take that which is of Christ and bring it in. Take that which was not of Christ and leave it alone, outside of the body. Our old community ways we need to re-examine. Our old ways of relating need to be inspected and tested. Our old ways of doing outreach and evangelism need to be picked over to see what is relevant to the community and the world in which we live. This is resurrection living. This is what Paul was trying to get the Corinthians to do. Examine what you're doing. Does it measure up to living in the, as the resurrection body of Christ? Paul speaks twice about being part of the body of Christ. First, in verse 13, he, he says that, and where he talks about baptism. For we are all baptized with, by one spirit as, so as to form one body. That says coming in to the body. That's the way in. That's the entry level. This is a real leveling up. No more, he says, are, is there Jew and Gentile. No more, he said, is there male and female in Galatians. It's equality. You know, the church, we as a community, should be championing pure equality. We're hearing quite a lot politically about leveling up. The church should be at the forefront of leveling up in the real sense of the word, going beyond the political, bringing through the oneness, the unity of Christ. Not competing for status, celebrity or acknowledgement, but in service to one another, recognizing that it's not public facing which is so important, but the mundane is important. What we do when people don't see us is far more important, an expression of the body of Christ, than when they see us. Snobbery has no place in the resurrection body of Christ. This is resurrection living. Living as an authentic community, living as one body. The second time he talks, he, he says that we are the body of Christ in verse 27, where he says it very, very explicitly, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you has a part. That means we are joined together. We're not individuals anymore. We are joined, whether we like it or not, we are joined. You, I, we are the body of Christ. Together. Here, he re-emphasized the fact that unity is not uniformity. They don't all look the same, speak the same, do the same. Each part of the body has different functions. But each is important. We're not all ears, we're not all eyes, we're not all mouths. 
we all have a part. We all have a function. And so, when we look at the church of Corinth, when we think about this coming together of the body, of the bones of Ezekiel, I guess in a way there's a bit of a warning to us. Let's not tear ourselves apart. Let's come together as the real, living, exalted, resurrection body of Christ. We are his representatives. So let us examine ourselves and ensure we are building, honoring, and living the right way as the body of Christ. Let us leave behind all that mutilates and harms the body of Christ. And let us move and grow forward to show a desperate world resurrection life. Let's pray together. Father, may we be that expression that we so desire of your body in Inverclyde and to the world. Father, in what we do publicly and what we do privately, may we be your body. And Lord Jesus, may you be proud of us as being your body. In Jesus' name, amen.